In this video, we'll talk about the last major section on the OSPF, which is adding the best route to its routing table. Uh, so OSPF uses Dijkstra SPF algorithm, which stands for shortest path first. So to build routes, the link state routers, they have to do some math. So, so the way that math works is, like we talked in my last video, uh, about LSAs and LSDB. Uh, so every router maintains a copy of LSDB, right? So what OSPF does is it uses the SPF algorithm, the shortest path first algorithm, to analyze the LSDB and build routes that the local router should add to this IP routing table. So that's the way it works. So LSAs uh, that are inside the LSDB, they do not contain the specific information that router needs. So that is the reason the SPF has to run uh, to find the best path. And once it finds the best path, what it does, it adds that into its routing table with the list of subnet number and mass, outgoing interface, which interface is going to take that path, and the next hop router IP address. This is pretty standard. If you are confused about how the, what are LSAs, what are LSTB, what kind of information they are, uh, uh, the information they contain, uh, go back to my last video and get clarity on that one. If not, you're gonna be more confused on this video. So that's my recommendation. Uh, so like we just talked about, router needs LSTB to build the routes. So you need to learn how to predict routes. So this is uh, what I'm saying here is all network admins, they need, even, and they need to know which routes the, the, the OSPF will take. Even though the math is done, everything is uh, Ill calculated, if you cannot predict in your mind or just uh, writing, like, you know, kind of say, hey, once I configure OSPF in my topology, the, the pack is going to take this way. These are the ones that's going to be included on my IP routing table. If you can't do that, then you're not going to have a full picture. But of course, yeah, to predict that, you're going to need to be armed with the, the network topology, with the interface, interface speed, all this kind of information, and you should be able to predict. So you need, this is important to learn saying, hey, I can predict as well, and that should match uh, what OSPF does. SPF algorithm, it calculates all possible routes for a submit. So the shortest path first algorithm uh, is simply it's a, it's a shortest path from one node to every other node. So it finds, uh, it just runs against the LSDB that has all that information. And then from there, it calculates its metric, which is the cost. And the lower, the better. The So those are the ones that's included in the, in the IP routing table for the for the routing to take take place so when it does that right so when it when it does that so what it does it takes the sum of all outgoing interface so to reach from one node to a, a, a another des a known destination what it does it takes the sum of all outgoing interface so how what was the cost going to be from my router to reach to a different subnet somewhere else, right? So it does not add the cost for incoming interface. So it, it, that, that's not taken into consideration. Only thing it does is the outgoing interface cost. That's it. One feature of OSPF is equal cost load balancing. So if you have two different, so when the SPF uh, does its calculation and if there is a tie in the metrics, right? So if there is a two different interfaces with same uh, cost, right? So if you have a cost of one, so you have 200 meg circuit connected to a router, right? By default, you haven't changed anything. As we talked on our first video, the reference bandwidth by default is 100 megabits per second. So 100 divided by 100 equals to one. So it's gonna have, to get to the subnet, I have two different paths with the equal cost, both are one. So the cost uh, is simply an overhead, right, to, to send packet 
over that interface. So these two are equal. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add both of those information into my routing table. So one packet can go this interface, the second packet can go into this interface just to load balance uh, and not waste uh, an interface idly. So by default, it supports up to four different routes, uh, but it can be configured. Uh, and that depends the maximum path that depends on the router platform. So that is it. That is the, the foundation topic of OSPF, how the neighbor shims are formed, uh, how the LSAs, LSDB are exchanged, how all the databases LSDB are synchronized uh, in a router, uh, in, a, in a same area router. And then how, after all those information are there, how router runs the SPF algorithm and how does it find the best route? How does it know, hey, these are the one I need to add in my routing table versus I should not be adding this. So we have covered it all. Uh, so my next video, what I'm gonna focus on is on the areas. That's another concept that needs to be understood very properly. So, uh, so, my, so I'll be working on creating that uh, video. Uh, until then, uh, I hope th this was informative to you and it was helpful. And I'd like to thank you for watching.